Welcome to the NPTE Final Frontier Podcast, helping one student at a time. Visit NPTEFF.com to enroll today so you can pass tomorrow. Thank you for joining us here on the NPTE Final Frontier Podcast. My name is David. And my name is Emily. Today, we will be discussing the APTA CSM 2022. So first, what does APTA CSM stand for? It stands for the American Physical Therapy Association Combined Sections Meeting. So now that we know what the abbreviation stands for, what is it? What is it? Exactly. Let's get to it. It's the largest physical therapy conference in the United States. It can draw from 12,000 to 16,000 physical therapy professionals attending. The programming is developed by APTA's 18 specialty sections and academies. While there, you can view over thousands of posters, earn CEUs, attend wonderful lectures presented by some of the best professionals in the field of physical therapy. In addition to this, it's a great time to network with other professionals in attendance. So the APTA CSM this year was held in San Antonio, Texas, which took place in early February. Next year, the conference is being held in San Diego, California, which we are all very excited about. That's for sure. I have never been to California, but cannot wait. And just to add to this, due to all the unfortunate circumstances taking place surrounding COVID-19, they have actually put APTA CSM on demand during the month of March 2022, which they're going to have more than 100 recorded educational sessions. If you've attended the in-person You'll have access to this as well, but you cannot get that CEU credit if you already attended the in-person aspect. All right. So, Emily, what was your favorite moment? Ooh, that's a tough one. All right. Well, I don't think I can say one specific moment, but instead an overall experience. And kind of like how you mentioned networking, I absolutely love being able to network with current and future Final Frontier students, in addition to current physical therapists who may have used Final Frontier as a prep course, or they may have just wanted to learn more about our program. Being able to work at the Final Frontier booth at the Exhibitor Hall gave me so many opportunities to network, and our Mixer event was so much fun, and we had a great turnout. So I would say these are definitely some of my favorite highlights of the trip. What about you? Oh, I, you threw me for a loop because I thought you were going to say that your favorite moment was getting to hang out with me, but I, I, I guess I was a little bit wrong with that. Don't but, push it. <laughs> joke, <laughs> joking aside, I totally agree with you that networking and getting to see all the students and getting to see alumni, getting to see the team, getting to see faculty and just other professionals in the field. It's so incredible and so much fun and walking Exhibitor Hall and seeing all of the new things that are taking place and getting to see the research posters. And it's just so incredible. And something that stood out to me was actually getting to meet so many people that I have been interacting with over social media, such as Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So finally getting to see people face to face that you've been interacting with, especially with everything that's been taking place during this era with COVID-19. It's been, it was just such a a relief to finally get to meet people face to face. And I loved every moment of it. I agree with you. It's so nice to finally be able to just meet with people in person and put faces to the names and voices. It definitely was a great experience. So What would you say one thing you learned from attending the conference was? Hmm. So I actually learned a lot about myself and also the opportunities that are in front of us, especially while at conferences. After the conference itself, you really have to take advantage of the evenings. Sometimes it's going to be tough, especially because you're doing so much at the conference itself, where once it becomes nightfall, you really just want to get back into the hotel room and rest up. 
but it is so valuable to take take charge of that moment and get out there. So I actually had the the pleasure and honor to attend the first ever internationally educated PT reception that was taking place. The reception was attended by professionals from all over the globe, Australia, South Africa, India, the Philippines, Nigeria, United Kingdom, South Korea, Jamaica, you name it. And it was just so, so cool and fun. And they even had the opportunity to attend the PT Fun Celebration of Diversity that was taking place there. And also they had so many alumni gatherings for physical therapy programs that you could have attended. So when you're attending these, make sure that you're aware of what's taking place, not only at the conference itself, but in the evening as well. I totally agree with you. And that is going to say that is one thing I have learned from not only attending the conference this year, but as well as conferences in the past. My biggest recommendation is to have a plan. There are so many amazing lectures to attend, booths to visit in the exhibitor hall. And like you said, David, things to do at night involving networking. You want to make sure you have looked all of this over and have a plan. I like to look over what lectures are occurring each day and make a list of which I plan to attend or at least have a general idea of some main ones I am interested in attending. I feel like this really helps make sure I don't miss out on anything, especially since once you are at the conference, it can definitely be overwhelming because there are so many amazing things going on. But unfortunately, there is just not time to attend everything. 100 percent. And I think uh, something that adds to that is actually being in a uh, destination area such as this was in San Antonio. So adding to that planning, you're also going to have to be planning what things you want to do while in San Antonio or wherever this is taking place. So planning is so important. All right, Emily. So what lectures or presenters stood out to you? So there were actually two lectures I attended, which really stood out to me for different reasons this year. The first lecture was presented by Dr. Ellen Hillegas and Morgan Keller Johansson, who are both physical therapists. This lecture was titled Outcome Measures to Assess Exercise Tolerance. What should I use and what is the evidence? I really loved this lecture because they reviewed various outcome measures that can be utilized in both the acute care and outpatient settings to best monitor our patient progress and help guide our treatment plans. And the other lecture I attended was the Hippest Hound Around, Rehabilitation Management of Dogs with Hip Dysplasia, which was presented by Lisa Gay Bendenbog, who is also a physical therapist. I really wanted to attend this lecture because my sister's dog, Lily, was recently diagnosed with hip dysplasia and had to undergo an FMO procedure due to a hip dislocation. So this lecture helped me bring home information on ways I can best help rehab Lily and help get her back on all fours and do her favorite things like running in the yard and playing with her doggy friends. So those were definitely two lectures I loved for very different reasons, as you can see. (laughs) What about you? Well, it's funny you say that because I love those doing those things too. So I, I definitely relate to Lily with that running around the yard, playing with my dog friends, definitely (laughs) relatable. So something that I actually really enjoyed lecture wise and presenter wise for me was during the pre-conference, I had the pleasure of attending LAMP Leadership 101, Personal Leadership Development, the Catalyst for Leading Within. This was conducted by the APTA Health Policy and Administration Section which is a specialty component of the APTA. They actually had a vote and underwent a name change while we were there. So now they're actually gonna be going under the name as the Academy of Leadership and Innovation. So this course with LAMP 101, LAMP Leadership 101, it covered mission and vision statements, earning trust, emotional intelligence, diversity of personal styles, energy management and resilience, communication, conflict resolution styles and techniques for conflict resolution, and also uh, paving your leadership path and understanding what are the next steps in your journey. So that's what I really enjoyed a ton. 
So as you can tell, based on how excited we are to share all of our experiences with you, we really did have an amazing time at CSM this year, being able to network with current and future physical therapists, learn new information to best help our own personal practices, and be able to spend time with our Final Frontier team, or better put, family. So stay tuned for our future episode where we will discuss why it is important to attend these professional conferences and how you can best use this information. All right, warriors, here's a quote from Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done. So no matter what, set those goals. They may be tough. They may seem impossible. They may seem like you cannot achieve it, but you can. So keep on pursuing it and go all in. You are powerful. You are strong. You are a final frontier warrior and you will pass. Thank you very much for listening. For more information on the NPTE Final Frontier, please visit NPTEFF.com. You can also check out all of our social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Till next time, have a great day and a powerful tomorrow.